What's up guys? Welcome back to Fisher Hex. So today's video is going to be a little bit different. I know that I mentioned on Monday that we'd be doing some powerhead video here for the 300 since they're being cleaned. But after uh, coming down here this morning, I realized that they are not ready to be cleaned. I'm going to give them another 12 hours or so uh, before I do that whole process. So for the sake of getting some content out, I'm going to go ahead and go through all the systems here in the fish room, give you guys a little bit of an update. And uh, because the last time I did this, you guys liked that video, had some uh, pretty good feedback. So we're going to go ahead and uh, do that again. Now, uh, the frag system here, just in case you guys aren't aware, it is a double stack low boy tank with AP700s for lighting, running a 40 breeder sump with a uh, 302 Aquatics algae scrubber, a bubble magnus curb 9 plus DC skimmer, and of course the dose uh, dosing pump for the two part. Now, one thing I want to ask you guys to do is if you can give me some feedback on the website. Now, I've asked a few people. I've gotten some positive. got some negative. But uh, the website in general, I'm basically looking at overall feedback on uh, what corals you guys would like to see on the site as well as the layout, what the site is missing. Now, I didn't go to school for building coral or building websites. Yeah, building corals. For uh, building websites, so I'm kind of just winging it and looking at other sites and trying to figure out what they're doing that's uh, positive, looking at the analytics, kind of seeing what route I should go. And uh, if you guys could uh, check out the site, let me know what you think, what you would add, what you would remove. Now, I will be adding a page for client tanks for the clients that don't mind having their stuff being shared. And uh, yeah, so that will be on there hopefully within the next month or so. But I would really like some feedback and let me let me know what you guys think again. Uh, just so I can improve it and make it more user-friendly. All right, and uh, yeah, so this 302 Aquatics Algae Scrubber is doing pretty awesome. Now, I will be doing a full review on it within the next month, but it just officially went up for sale on 302aquatics.com. I will put a link to it in the description below. It is an all-in-one setup, comes with a pump, comes with everything, plug and play, and it's, um, it's going up as the Fish of Hex Special, and I will put a link to a promo code or add the promo code in the description of this video where you guys can get 10% off your entire order. And uh, yeah, so that's awesome. And I really like this algae scrubber. It's turning out pretty good. I just cleaned it a little while ago and it's already starting to do some work. Hopefully it will focus there for you guys. It's doing pretty well. Um, and uh, yeah, so you guys should look forward to that review and everything. Uh, yeah, so hopefully I will have that out again in the next month. I'm kind of falling behind schedule as always. Since I'm only putting out about two videos a week, I have been kind of falling behind because I usually put out three or four. But for my sanity, I had to come down to uh, to two videos a week. So other than that, the, uh, the skimmer here, it's been on here for about three weeks. No break-in period, doing really well. Just cleaned the cup out uh, late last night. And as you can see, it's getting, it's getting a little bit going on there. Like it, it's definitely working. Other than that, the frag system is doing well. I have some room down here for some more coral. I did go through a little spell of getting Abtasia, and I was gonna talk about this in a later video, which I still will when I do a review on the Nudibranch and the Majana wand. But I, since I bring coral in from all over the place, many different wholesalers, local hobbyists, regardless of dipping and cutting off the frag plug, sometimes you get Abtasia. So I went through a little spell of getting it, after uh, using the Majana wand and using the nudies and also using um, some peppermint shrimp, I completely eradicated it. I think there might be one or two left in the tank, but uh, you know, that's kind of, it sucks, but that's really part of the whole game when it comes to bringing coral in and, and processing it and getting it healed and out for uh, sale. So that's why I always recommend, no matter if you buy coral from me or from any other hobbyist or vendor, you need to definitely quarantine your coral to make sure you can catch that stuff before it gets in your main display. And uh, if any vendor or anybody tells you they never had Aptasia in their tanks, they're probably lying. And you guys know that I'm upfront and honest with you. But I've been successful in getting rid of 99% uh, of it, so I'm really happy. And I will show you guys those methods in a later video. Now, move o moving over here to the RODI mixing station. Uh, you guys have asked me a question about the uh, hose reel. What do I do with the water in the hose that's been sitting there for, you know, between uses, usage? Well, basically, I go ahead and I put a five-gallon bucket down there and I will drain out about two gallons of water from the hose before I even go to top off the tanks or do a water change, just to remove all the water from the hose. And uh, I know it's a vinyl tubing and it is RODI, and RODI is, no, is known to pull stuff out of plastics, and that's why I use the food grade barrels here, just for that reason. So 
yep, yeah, I definitely don't use the water that's sitting in the hose. I um, drain it out before usage. Other than that, everything is doing good, rocking. I've kind of changed up my water change schedule, so I'm only going through about two of these 170 gallon barrels a, a month, which is saving me a little bit of money, but uh, you know, it is still a lot of water. Moving over to the 300, now I will put a overlay of video so you guys are not seeing so much blueness here. And uh, yeah, the tank is doing quite well. I did have somebody comment saying that the growth is not nearly as good as it was in my 125. Now, a couple reasons for that is I literally just finished the lighting in July. If you guys have been following this build, I actually had one or two pucks of uh, the Radeons, and mostly T5s for over the last uh, 10 months or so. So it's just recently that I actually had the lighting completely finished and now the growth is starting to take off. So if you guys are wondering why some of the corals and some of the colonies might be smaller than others, it's because the lighting is finally finished and now they can start growing. And uh, yeah, also on the 125, I had a lot of easy SPS like um, bird's nest, stylos, those kinds of things. I had a, quite a few acros in there, but mostly that easy SPS monte caps and stuff like that. And anybody who's grown those know that they grow really, really fast. So. Uh, yeah, but we'll see. I'm hopefully hopefully getting about six years out of this tank before I have to tear it down. But that will all decide on kind of how life goes and what happens in between now and then. But I do enjoy the tank. I really love it. And, of course, with all the support you guys gave me when I broke down that 125, buying the coral, supporting me through donations and that frag swaps, you guys are the reason why this whole tank even exists. So I'm thankful for no matter what it looks like and what it turns out because uh, you know you guys this channel everything made it happen and again I'm, I'm very thankful um, now the uh, sump is doing quite well I did just replace another one of these um, what are they the pumps for the ATK second time I've replaced that in there uh, in the last year I've replaced it twice on my frag system and multiple other pumps at with other clients um, I'm not a fan of the ATK, and if this pump dies, I'm done with the ATK auto top-off portion. I'll still use it for like flow meters and stuff like that, but I'm done with it. That utility pump is a pile of shit. It's that simple. So, uh, yeah, so take that into consideration when you're looking to buy an ATO system. Um, again, I'll probably do a review on that pump later on. I'm just trying not to hurt anybody's feelings because when I do negative reviews, I get more uh, people complaining about it than anything else. So, we'll see. Um, yeah, other than that, everything's doing great. I dialed the skimmer back a little bit because I'm having a ton of uh, lack of nutrients in this tank. Basically, I go through, uh, every two weeks, I fill up this five gallon waste collection from the skimmer every two weeks, which is uh, too much. It should be about once a month, so I've kind of dialed it back a little bit to uh, cut back on the amount of skimmates. So, uh, yeah, that's it with the 300. Let's go ahead and move over to the quarantine system. Now, uh, I went ahead and picked up a fox face and a clown tang. He's in there somewhere. He's hiding. These are going to be for the 300 gallon. I picked them up yesterday. They are in one milliliter of copper, which is half the recommended dose. Next 24 hours, they'll go up to another milliliter and they'll stay at that for 14 days. Now, down here, I have the same situation for the copper for a purple tang, which I picked up from a local hobbyist. Now, he does have ick and he is a mean fish. He's killed a bunch of fish in his tank and that's the reason why he's here. Now he's gonna go up to another milliliter of copper in the next 24 hours, but he's gonna spend 45 days in quarantine and I'm most likely going to go ahead and keep these guys in there for 45 days to make sure that I can add them at the same time because I will be adding multiple tangs and then adding that fox face. Hopefully when doing that, the aggression in the tank will be uh, not as bad. Hopefully they will adapt a little bit quicker and adding multiple fish is definitely gonna help out with that. Now moving over here, we have some antheus in quarantine for a client. It's going to be JP's uh, 75. Now, you guys haven't seen that tank yet. I'm going to go take pictures and get that tank out to you guys hopefully soon. It's been on my to-do list for a while. It's looking pretty good. It's all DIY. It's awesome setup, and uh, can't wait to share it with you. Other than that, we have the Freshwater QT, which is empty. I'm going to get some Molly soon. Uh, the top left and bottom right are empty, and we'll probably get some fish here shortly. So let's go ahead and move over to the Freshwater tank. Now about four days ago, I went ahead and hacked all the plants. All the Laguidia was sitting up at the top of the water, so I went ahead and just cut all of that out. Now, I'm still struggling with a little bit of algae with the substrate, making some adjustments with my dosing, um, have the CO2 cranked up. I'm feeding the fish probably uh, once a week, and then they just nibble on the algae. And uh, yeah, the, this tank is not really anything that I'm going out of my way to make perfect, but I definitely enjoy having it here in the fish room, and we'll kind of see what it turns into over time. Now I am trying out this, uh, I think it's Greenleaf. I don't see what company this is, I don't remember. 
Um, yeah, Greenleaf Aquatics, their um, micros and macros dosing. I've done this before on some other tanks, and um, it's pretty decent. We have it hooked up to the pump here. I am dosing some additional CO2, and um, we're going to see how it works out. I have, I have never used it on this type of substrate, so we'll see. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll give it some more time, give it another month or so, and kind of see how the results are. Now down to the sump, I went ahead and removed the marine pier. The reason for that is even with this, um, I guess, felt here that I change out once a week, the marine pier was full of detritus, and it, I, feel, I felt that it was just adding to more algae in the tank. Once I removed it, the tank kind of cleared up within, within a week. So the marine pier is out. I no longer use it in my salt water, and I do not use it here in my fresh water. I kind of want to give it a last shot here with the fresh water side of things, but it didn't work out. Now, uh, yeah, so let's go to move over to the 30 gallon, and I will do some uh, video overlay so you guys aren't uh, dealing with so much blue. Now, if you noticed, I have a different clown in there. Uh, I used to have two of the white ones, but the male actually jumped out the top of this hole and was dried up on the floor. I have no idea how he got out of there, but uh, yeah, he, uh, he didn't make it. So I went ahead and put this clown that I had in my quarantine system in there and unfortunately they're both females so they've been fighting like crazy and uh it's pretty brutal it's been a couple weeks and hopefully things will get better um also have three cleaner shrimp in there that are going to jp's house and if you guys notice i have my starfish in here from the 300. now they're in there temporarily uh the the uh a sailfin tang was being a little aggressive to the blue starfish no idea why but i went ahead and removed and put them in here and we'll give it a few weeks and i'll put them back in the 300 and see if uh, he's kind of changed but other than that, tank's doing well. HD Prime, these uh, hang on the back skimmer, doing good. And uh, yeah, no issues. I haven't done a water change in about three weeks, and all the SPS seems to be doing quite well. But uh, yeah, so that's about it for the tanks here in the fish room. Um, definitely appreciate you guys sticking to the video. Again, check out the website. Let me know what you think about uh, the layout and everything, and hopefully I'll have a video for you guys Friday with either the, the 20,000 subscriber contest or we'll get into cleaning uh, the power heads and fixing the dead one which has already died within a year so I don't know how many Jabo pumps I'm going to continue to use if they keep dying within uh, 12 months so other than that guys appreciate you watching and I'll see you in a later video peace